This is the third lecture about the development of the heart. Uh, it deals with the septation of the atrium. The intended learning outcomes of this lecture are number one, to list the sources and steps of formation of the interatrial septum. Number two is to describe the embryonic remnants of this septum, the various components, septum primum and septum secundum. Number three is to describe the types and causes of defects into the interatrial septum, which are called atrial septal defects or ASD. Septation of the atria begins with septation of the atrioventricular canal. What is the atrioventricular canal? It is the narrow connection that lies between the common atrium and the common ventricle. This is a side view of the heart tube. The common atrium, as we said, is above the AV canal, then the uh, common ventricle, and this is the bulbous cornice. If we have a cross section here, uh, the AV canal appears oval in shape, and uh, it's not uh, divided into any chambers. Uh, what happens next is the appearance of two endocardial cushions growing from the ventral and the dorsal walls of the AV canal, called ventral and dorsal endocardial cushions. Both unite in the middle, forming one septum uh, across the cavity of the AV canal. Here it is, called septum intermedium. Okay, now the AV canal is divided into two halves. On the right side, this is the tricuspid orifice. And on the left side, this is the mitral orifice. Uh, cells begin to proliferate from the margins of the AV canal to form cusps. Three cusps on the, tri uh, on the tricuspid side and two cusps on the uh, mitral site. So the first component of the interatrial septum is the formed septum intermedium in the AV canal. Now two septa begin to grow from the roof of the atrium. The first one descends like a crescent uh, from the roof called septum primum. The opening below the septum cremum or below the crescent between it and the septum intermedium is called ostium primum. Uh, gradually, as the septum descends, the ostium primum becomes reduced inside uh, until it is closed totally by descent of the lower border of the septum primum and also by upward growth from cells of the dorsal endocardial cushion. Uh, I have to mention that during intrauterine life, the opening between the two atria has to persist. Blood reaching the right atrium has to pass to the left atrium in order that for the baby to survive. For that uh, reason, uh, while closure of the ostium primum or the foramen primum is taking place, Small holes appear in the upper part of the septum primum. As these small holes fuse together, a large opening appears above the septum primum, and this one is called ostium secundum. So now we have to notice that in the beginning there was an ostium primum, and later there is an ostium secundum, and both are in one septum, which is the septum primum. On the right side of the uh, septum primum, another septum descends. It is also crescentic. It descends from the roof and from the anterior aspect of the common atrium. It is called septum secundum. It is thicker than the septum uh, primum. And the opening below it is called the foramen ovale. You have to notice that this foramen ovale never closes. Okay, uh, the last thing you have to notice is that uh, the two horns of the 
the septum secundum do not reach the septum intermedium. The anterior horn reaches the septum intermedium. However, the posterior horn is separated by a gap from the septum intermedium. What closes this gap is fusion of the left venous valve and the septum spurium that we mentioned in the sinus venosus. Well, blood has to pass from the right side to the left side throughout intrauterine life. For that purpose, blood coming from the inferior vena cava to the right atrium pushes the septum primum like a door towards the left side and passes above it to reach the left atrium. As pressure rises inside the left atrium, this door is turned back to close the opening, and so on and so forth. Until the time of birth, where pressure becomes equal in the left atrium and the right atrium. At that time, the two septa, that is to say the septum secundum and the septum primum, fuse together. Some embryonic remnants remain in the adult heart. When we look at the uh, interatrial septum, we see a fossa called fossa ovalis, and the margin above it and anterior and posterior to it is called limbus fossa ovalis or annulus ovalis. Where are these coming from? The fossa ovalis here comes from the septum primum, while the annulus ovalis, or this margin, comes from the lower margin of the septum secundum. So, if we try to compare uh, between the septum primum and the septum secundum, we can compare them regarding the timing, the size, the thickness, the direction, the openings, and the closure. Uh, regarding the timing, the septum secundum appears later than the primum. Regarding the site, the septum secundum is on the right side of the primum. Thickness, secundum is thicker than primum. The direction, uh, the secundum uh, is directed from the roof and anterior aspect, whereas the primum is directed from the roof and posterior aspect. Uh, regarding the secundum, its anterior horn does not uh, reaches the um, septum intermedium. However, the posterior horn does not reach the septum intermedium. Uh, regarding the openings, um, the septum primum has two openings, foramen primum below it in the beginning and foramen secundum above it, whereas the septum secundum has only one opening called foramen uh, ovale. Uh, regarding the closure, uh, the foramen primum closes, uh, foramen secundum never, uh, while the foramen ovale never closes. Uh, now, as we said before, uh, there is absorption of the uh, right horn of the sinus venosus uh, into the right atrium, forming its smooth posterior part. Uh, the same thing happens on also on the left side. Uh, there is an absorption uh, of the common pulmonary vein, which is formed by union of four pulmonary veins, two coming from each lung. Uh, every uh, two of one side unite together, forming uh, a left and a right pulmonary veins. Both of them unite to form one stem in a Y-shaped manner, and this uh, stem opens into the back of the left atrium. Uh, the components of this Y become absorbed uh, into the uh, left atrium, into the posterior aspect, forming a smooth part of it also. Uh, at first, the common stem uh, becomes absorbed so that two openings appear in the back of the left atrium. Then the right and left pulmonary veins also become absorbed so that uh, every individual vein from the four opens has its single opening 
into the back of the left atrium. And in adult life, uh, you have seen that the left atrium receives four pulmonary veins. So that if we uh, uh, enumerate the components or the structures entering into the formation of each atrium or the sources of each atrium, we will find three components into each one. First of all, there is the uh, half of the common atrium, and this forms the uh, rough auricular part. And then there is an absorbed structure on the back. On the right side, it is the absorbed right horn of the sinus venosus, while on the left side, it is the absorbed Y-shaped common stem of the uh, pulmonary uh, veins. And the third component is uh, the upper part of the AV canal above the AV valves, that is to say the uh, tricuspid and the mitral. This part of the AV canal uh, becomes widened in a funnel-shaped manner to enter into the formation of the uh, corresponding atrium. Now, in order to understand the causes of formation of the atrial septal defect, or ASD, uh, we have to uh, revise together the four uh, sources of the interatrial septum. Uh, that is to say, the septum intermedium, this is number one. Septum primum, this is number two. Septum secundum, this is number three. Right venous valve and septum spurium, this is number four. And we have four types of uh, ASD. Uh, as you can see in the uh, picture on the right side, you may have an ASD in the middle of the interatrial septum, or you may have it in the lower part, or you may have it in the upper part, or you may have a total absence of the interatrial septum as a whole. These are the four types. How did they uh, form? Uh, we will start with the middle one, which is called patent foramen ovale. Uh, compare this opening with the picture on the uh, left side. You may develop this patent foramen ovale due to one of three uh, reasons. Uh, number one, uh, that the septum secundum is underdeveloped. It did not descend enough so that its lower border overlaps the upper border of the ostium uh, secundum. Uh, the second reason uh, is due to excessive resorption or absorption of the septum primum, that is to say due to very wide uh, ostium secundum. Uh, the third one is that uh, both edges overlap and everything seems to be okay. But, however, fusion does not occur between the two septa. Uh, this type is called the probe patent foramen ovale, meaning that in post-mortem life, if you examine a post-mortem art, you may pass a probe under the annulus ovalis, and it passes easily to the left side. Uh, strange enough that you have to know that in 25% of normal people, uh, this type of abnormality is present. So it is not considered as the propatent foramen ovale is not considered as a, a congenital anomaly. It is rather a variation, a normal variation. Well, uh, the second type is the hole in the lower part of the septum here. That is to say in this part here. Uh, this may occur due to failure of the dorsal endocardial cushion to rise up to fill the gap uh, in the foramen primum. So this type is called endocardial cushion ASD, or sometimes it is called uh, ostium primum ASD. Okay, the third type is the one that we notice in the upper posterior part of the interatrial septum, and this may occur here due to failure of fusion of the left venous valve and septum spurium with the interatrial septum. That is why it is called sinus venosus ASD. So uh, I will revise with you the three names. Uh, the one in the middle is called 
patent for human ovary. The one below is called uh, endocardial cushion ASD or uh, ostium primum ASD. Uh, the one above and behind is called sinus venosus ASD. And each name uh, will give you a hint uh, for the uh, etiology of such uh, septal defect. The last one is total disappearance or total uh, non-formation of the septum primum and septum secundum. In such case, uh, we call this heart a, a trilocular heart uh, with two ventricles. They call it trilocular biventricular heart, or we call it common atrium. Uh, well, uh, at the end, I would like to thank you all for uh, listening, and I'll see you in another lecture, inshallah.